another uh, star, a star is born. Uh, we knew he could fight. Uh, we knew he had power. I, we knew he was, uh, he was sensational. And tonight, uh, he proved all that. And then some, the new WBO, middleweight champion of the world, kick off it, kick off it. It's amazing, you know, to be here with uh, Oscar De La Hoya, who actually won that title, that exact same title, the WBO, Middleweight Championship of the World. And then to have another legend there, Bernard Hopkins, who won exactly that same title, the WBO, Middleweight Championship of the World. And here now is the future and the present of the middleweight division. Uh, an amazing performance, you saw the skills, Oh, uh, oh, what a great fight he fought, with the patience he fought. Um, uh, Bernard, the all-time reigning middleweight king, I think you were impressed, right? Very. And so, uh, really uh, great to see that the middleweight division is in the hands of somebody as good as strong with a huge future, Peter Quillen. Peter. Thank you so much. I want to point out something right there. You see that guy right there? That guy, he just betted on me before the fight. He was betting on another guy. I'm glad you lost some money. <laughs> most important, um, I'm very blessed to be in front of y'all. I'm very blessed to be part of a, such a huge promotion team backing me, which is in Golden Boy. You know, guys like Bernard Hopkins, who's been seeing me off and on and just giving me wisdom and knowledge, and I've been carrying that on. You know, I'm working with a proper team, how he been advising me on the best opportunities out there. I got the my management, John Seep and Jimmy McDevlin, who's hardworking, and you know, you can't have all these hardworking people backing you, and you're not a hardworking fighter, you know, so I'm very blessed to be in a, in a wild card boxing club working with Eric. You know, Freddie's very busy, but Eric has been taking the time and been in the trenches with me. But you just saw the blessing, and I, I learned something throughout this whole journey, you know. Um, you know, I got the work ethic behind me, and every camp I just take it up and take something where I learn from each camp and try to make a better camp the next one. And I learned so much about myself. If you um, can take a moment with me, I used to um, start out the camp. It's kind of like listening to everybody because everybody was saying, oh, you're fighting for a world title. And they had their things to say about that. And I had to go back to what I knew. And I started going in the mirror. And I asked myself every day before training, I said, who's going to value you more than you value yourself? I got a million people value me here. So I got to place myself above there. And I, I learned when, when I started doing that, I started under, understanding that, you know, a guy with only 15 amateur fights, you know, um, you know, is able to go out there and perform at a high level with all the hard work. Now I got seven years durability on my body and seven years durability of fighting, pure fighting at a professional level. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not saying like I accomplished much, but besides being the world champion tonight, you know, I, I got to give credit to Hassan because he, he fought like a champion. I looked in his eyes and I, you know, I was calling him a gazelle before the fight, but I seen the lion in his eyes. And, you know, I, I got to give a lot of credit to him because he, he just made me a better fighter tonight. Sam and Dom absolutely agree and fought a great fight. He's the world champion. He came here. He really uh, came to win. He fought uh, a very courageous fight. Uh, never gave up. Went down, came up, went down, came up. Uh, and uh, in the end, obviously, uh, Peter uh, was just a bit too much. So uh, give it up for Hassan and Dom as well. Uh, you know, uh, when we, they say you fight with Peter Kelly. You know that I am a fighter, I am a great fighter, I want to fight the best boxer. <laughs> Peter Kilino has undefeated. I say yes, but uh, you know, <coughs> for beginning, when I take my belt in June, in Ju July, the WBO say you fight the one of 15, or 15 number one. I say okay, I go to my training camp, I, uh, I have a uh, I, I say I want to fight uh, Martin Murray. He say uh, he don't want. He doesn't want. After he say I say I want to find number two Peter Kelly. I'm number three at this time. I don't know that I fight with Peter Kelly. At this time I'm going to my training camp, and uh, and then they say Peter Kelly, I'm number one now, and you need to do a mandatory fight. I don't have time to prepare Peter Kelly because Peter Kelly is a great boxer, you know. 
he have, he are indefinite. I say okay because I never give up for ne for no no fight ne never in my life. I'm boxer. I'm I'm man. He have two hands. I have two hands. I say no. I, I I go in. I sign the rematch for this fight because I don't I I don't prepare for very well for this fight because I know that I go in like that, but I don't have all thing to win this fight. But I have I have boxing for win this fight. I say I go, but I sign the rematch for this fight. No, now know that for the 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 next fight for Peter King, he need to fight me for rematch. I think he's here or in France or another place. But Peter King give the best of him today. He has the he has the champion. He went he won today because you know uh, in my life I I never never go down. For knockout, I surprised for four round. I say okay, I I have twelve round to to win. I begin, I go every, two times because you know what? I I see the <coughs> the tape of Peter King. He have a right hand very small <laughs> and uh, a pocket. I walk for him. He, don't, he never touch me with right hand. But I never know that he have a oh. Very, very, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I never know that you have a very, very good hope too. But you know, you know that. But you know that, my friend, for the rematch, I will work for this, for all things. I know that I have boxing for fight, uh, for, for beat you. But today you are the best, you win. And congratulations for this fight. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <clears throat> I didn't watch Woody much film of Hassan. I just knew that once I was stepping in the ring with him, I had to learn him right there. And that's what me in the first couple rounds was learning him and seeing what I was able to do. And, you know, Eric was, you know, he's a trainer, so he's going to try to push the best out of me. Like I said, when people value here, you got to place yourself above. And I'm, I'm willing to try anything he tells me because I trust that whatever advice he's giving me, giving me the best advice for me. So, you know, he wanted me to put the pressure more. I didn't want to be one of those kind of guys that follow behind my um, Hassan and you let him use his boxing skills because he does have great boxing skills. So I wanted to cut the ring a little bit more. Eventually, I wanted to go to the body a little bit more, but he's he got good, he got great distance. He knows his distance pretty well. And you know, I was just trying to close the distance with him. And, you know, um, I landed some, some good punches. He landed some good punches. And this what made a good fight tonight for you guys. Last question for you, Peter. Uh, later, later in the fight, uh, he he came on strong. In fact, I, I gave him the last uh, four rounds heading to the to the final round. I'm down one point. Uh, what did Eric Brown tell you in the corner before that 12th round? And what did what were you thinking as far as having to finish this fight like a champion? Well, he told me animal status. If you hear me say that all the time, it's me not thinking like a human. It's me thinking like an animal. And he was telling me, you gotta be an animal. You gotta be an animal. And I was trying to press the action, but I ain't gonna even lie. I looked at his son, and like I said, I seen the lion in his eye, man. I seen that he was really wanted this fight. He really wanted to win, so I can't take that will away from him, and that's what, I, again, made this a good, good fight. Not only for Hassan to learn some things, but also for me to be a good champion. There is a rematch clause, assuming that it is economically feasible, and so I'll be talking to the networks and see what can be done, but uh, the WBO does not recognize immediate rematches. But I think the way that Hassan fought, to, fought tonight is certainly a kind of fighter which we would like to see back here in the United States as well. I mean, he's an exciting guy. He comes to fight. This is exactly the kind of fighters we like here in the United States. I see dancers in the ring, too. <laughs> you were overcome with emotion after the fight. What was some of the things that were going through your, through your mind? Well, I was, I was basically crying tears of joy, you know. Um, as uh, all you guys know, I got a real tough story. I came to New York when I was 18, a young kid. I left I left Grand Rapids, Michigan because I was sick and tired. My, my best friend, Johnny Perez, was telling me, you know, I said, bro, if I had an opportunity to move to New York, what would you say? He said, you know, you fighting guys in the street, man. They ain't going to fight you for long. They might really want to hurt you with weapons. So I would advise you to get out of here. So when I came here, um, it was real rough, man. I it went to the point where the trainer that brought me here kicked me out of his house. He was standing on me with a hammer. Get the hell out of my house, you know? And I was just like, man, just let me go. Just let me leave, man. And I was on the train, on the four train, going ahead into the Lower East Side, not knowing where I was going to go. And I went, and I called my boy Steve, and Steve was telling me, 
you know, come here. And we talked about it. From there, Steve was telling me, he said, you know what, Pete? You can stay here. You know, stay here as long as you need to. And I was staying on a little couch. And the couch was so little that I was like, man, F this, man, I'm gonna get on the floor. And I'm comfortable with laying on the hardwood floor. To the point where Steve called me, like, man, Pete, I don't want to disrespect you or anything, but I see a mattress laying out there in the trash, basically. What you want to do? And I said, man, let me go look at it. I looked at it, I said, man, we're going to get that thing. I shrubbed it up, and that's what I was sleeping on. So um, that that right there was the testament of where, well, I don't question God's will. I don't say, why did that happen? Why? I mean, all these things, I mean, all those things happen to be where I'm at today. And, I, and I, that's what gives me the confidence to know I went through a lot of hard times to be where I'm at. And like I said, I'm not trying to take anything from my my son because he's a good champion but um you know i was crying thinking about all those times where i didn't have family or somebody telling me now everybody got to tell me mom this is how you win a championship but nobody ever told me this is how you get off the floor and make yourself better all right that's good yeah. 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 some of us that were inside uh, that you know i know you, you said there so that he hasn't faced a fighter of your level but maybe you hadn't faced a fighter with his kind of his athleticism and his boxing, you know, style. <clears throat> and also, what about his style brought out, made this fight exciting and maybe brought out, like you said, the well, best in you? I have to say intelligence. You know, you can, anybody can go out there and play rock and stop and boxing. And that means this old, wild, crazy punch. He's actually working behind his jab, working with his movement, knew exactly his distance. And you know, um, that's right there is what I had to figure out and get to the point. I was taking those couple rounds where I had to figure out his movement. He was kind of leaning to the left with his jab, and it was kind of awkward to me. But you know, and that's what makes him a good fighter: is those things and those those qualities about himself. But you know, eventually, like I said before the fight, eventually I was going to touch him, and he was going to have to really figure out what kind of fight he is. And you know, like I said, anybody can you know fight hard, but he got off on the canvas every time I dropped him to try to come back and win. The first knockdown we thought was over, the second knockdown we thought was over. What was going through your mind where he continued to get up and then also later in the rounds when he was coming over? Yeah. Put it really right to your mouth. He's not. He's not gonna quit. He's just getting up every time I drop him. You know what I'm saying? He's getting right back up. And like, like I said, I never had a guy like out of 27 fights. Every guy that I touch, they 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 became hurt. You know, and some of those guys got that will where they they want to last. And that's what he had. And you no. Know, it was all about winning one round at the time. I knew I was comfortable, confident in my conditioning to do 12 rounds. And, you know, it's about having that intelligence and not to let nothing, you know, deter you from where you was trying to go. And that's why I was keeping focus. And if he got back up, then I had to keep putting him down or I had to keep winning or, you know, just take the fight for what it is. Um, have he ever hurt me? Well, he hit me with a punch in my neck. That joint hurt it. But, you know. Like I, I, I try to share no pain. I try to show no pain at all. I try to show no flaw at all. I, I noticed that I was playing, I was fighting off the rope for a minute, and I think I'm usually confident with that, but I learned something. Don't be fighting off them ropes, because you know, he might hit me with something, like he hit me with an uppercut, and you know, I was like, man, I'm gonna get off this rope right here, you know, fighting in the middle of the ring. Do you show the great fight? Who you have on your radar? Who would you want next? Well, you know what? I'm on a lot of guys' menu right now, so it's not gonna be a problem to get a fight. I got a hard working team behind me. I got Al Heyman, I got Golden Boy, I got my management. You know, like, you know, that people say, oh man, you gotta fight for the glory. Well, I found out some glory don't pay your bills. So I, I'll fight anybody. I said I'll fight my own moms, and I still mean that, but now I got the middleweight champion, she might wanna fight with me. But the most important thing is that, like, when you got hard working people behind you that know the demographics with everything, um, I don't have to worry. All I got to do is go to the gym, prepare for the challenges that they come in front of me, and I face them. And you know what? I'm looking to be a victor every time I step out there. So whoever, you know, I'm not going to be disrespectful calling out the calling out these fighters. I was calling on Sergio Martinez, and as you can see, that never happened. So I'm just going to be focused. I'm the only American middleweight rated right now, and like I'm, this is all a blessing. I'm going to take God's platform and be responsible with it, and it'll just be inspiring people. Two things. You showed a very good chin tonight. And the second thing, you and your dad have a special relationship. So what did he tell you after the fight? Well, it's the same dedication you got to that Detroit hat you got on right now and you're in New York City right now. But what I look at is like, 
my dad. <laughs> By the way, they did beat the Yankees, though. But my father is my inspiration in my life. You know, he's from Cuba. When I say he's from Cuba, he's born and raised in Cuba. And a lot of people would take it and say, oh, he's not Cuban because I don't really speak Spanish. But my dad did a lot of time in prison when he was out of my life. You know, when I tell people, describe your father, I say, well, watch Scarface. And that's my pops right there. That's a real story. <laughs> but my pops, you know, gave me that work ethic. You know, a lot of pops, I figure out, when they get out of prison, they go back to prison. My dad got out of prison and he showed his, like, roofing. He showed his, like, construction. He showed his plumbing, but I hate that job right there. And I, I learned something else that my dad did. He's underpaying me. So I eventually quit it a whole bunch of times. But what I can say is I know how to do roofing, I know how to do plumbing, I know how to build things just because of my dad. And also what he has instilled in me is about hard work and just working for what you want and never asking people for what you want to get and you got to work for it. So that's why I'm thankful for my pops. I've been in Cuba. I'm planning on going back, you know, just, you know, learn about myself and, and just try to get better as a person. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, really fantastic. We have a new middleweight champion here in America. I want to give, I want you guys to give yourself a round of applause because boxing is the type of sport for most of us. It's not a sport. It's a lifestyle. I live this. It's my life. So when you write about boxing, I want you to write not so much of an opinion, but write about bringing the sport up. Because this this sport right here has changed me for the better. It's changed me to be a, a, a guy that want to inspire people. And I'm thankful to be in front of all you guys. I see some of you guys all the time. And I'm blessed to even know you all these years. And I'm glad I'm, I'm able to be a middleweight champion. Y'all was part of this moment. Thank you.